Well, we have exceeded our five minutes briefly, maybe just 30 seconds or so, but it seems like everybody's back or at least headed this way. Who all was here in December that you remember uh, when I filled in for Brian? Quite a few. And you heard I was coming tonight, and you still chose to come. So that's good. You know, our, uh, our heart that can be so hardened at times towards the gospel, towards the scriptures, towards God's move in our life, um, can be brought to attention in, in uh, small ways, kind of like we were talking about with the children or I was praying. But um, I don't know about you, but... That John 3.16 song, um, that's got to find some residence somewhere in your mind, in your heart, that you recall this week. Um, you guys have been working on that one for a couple of weeks, I assume? Or was this the first night? How many weeks? That's the first time? Nice. So will that one continue for a few weeks, or will there be a new one next week? New one next week. Very nice. New one every week. Very nice. Well, I'm glad I've got that figured out. Um, but as you soak those truths up of Scripture, you have opportunity to be changed, like really molded by God. I mean, it, isn't that why we're here? And, and so to take part in that what seemingly small way with the scripture through song and our children. I have, we're expecting our 8th in July. My wife is having our 8th in July. And, and so our seven are uh, 13 years old to turn in two. And um, so as you can imagine, the, the children, um, God's taught us a lot. And we've learned to, man, see some uh, wonderful things about life that God does in children's hearts and children's minds. And, and uh, at some point, God teaches you that it's not about you, right? I mean, we, we walk that in life, and at some point, we hit this stage that we learn things and we see things, and God finally reveals it to you that it's not about you. And that's what our children have really brought my wife and I to this point in our life where we, we, we finally get it. It's not about us. Glorifying God, loving other people, seeing our children grow up, be drawn unto God himself and the relationship in Christ. And so John 3.16 was something that I was already going to read tonight, believe it or not. And, um, and the reason <clears throat> that it was on my mind was because of the simplicity of the scriptures and how quickly we get on our own track to where <clears throat> our mind is gone nuts we've completely lost it and uh, a week seems like an eternity and we can find ourselves on another planet in about two days in our mind our heart our walk our path maybe I'm alone on that it's just me but sometimes I find myself in a different world because of something whether it's my walk or someone or a conversation that was had <clears throat> and to come back to the simplicity of the gospel one that God so loves us that he gave his son. As we believe in him, we have eternal life that none should perish because God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that we might be saved through him. And so there's this immediate message that we hear that it's not God looking at our path as, we, as we're growing in him or as we're the lost that are around us. It's not God looking at us going, you terrible, awful people. You deserve death. There's nothing I'm going to do for you. you, you just, you're just going to die right where you're at. You're going to be stuck in your mess. It's just done for you. Other people are going to figure it out. You are not. And you know that about yourself. That's not the word from our, our Savior. That's not the word from Scripture. So we, we should have a, a different idea of what it is that God's doing. And He's He's working in us to bring it about us. And we could read on in John about this, 
eternal life that's welling up in us, this spring that is producing in us that we simply can't produce. The clock that you guys usually have in the back is broke tonight. And I want you to know that ahead of time because we've actually set up triple care for the nursery. So we're going to rotate in. Um, because we would never want to leave one, one family back there for three hours. Because we're not to our text yet for tonight. You know, it is special when you forget about time. I'm not talking about tonight. We'll stay timely. But it, it reminded me as I thought through some of this, it reminded me of a college internship that, that I went on. And that's how I met my wife. We became good friends. And we were serving in uh, initially central Mexico, and we ended up on the West Coast for that summer. And we had rented this house. The group had rented this house. And so the guys had the top of the house, the girls had the bottom. But we would, every night, the whole group would come together and, you know, play the acoustic out on the porch and stuff. And, and uh, we had no college students. We had no care for the time, Right. You know, today, that's still some of the things that I recall is the songs that we sang, the the testimony that was given, or the the scripture that was read. I recall to that location God's work in my life, because it it really is special. So how how do we create that ongoing? Family and your home or your apartment, you can let time go too. The work day's over. You got the kids, dinner, whatever. You can forget about the time. You can read and pray and worship and not be focused on, okay, my five-minute devotion's over, so let's just go on and go watch some more March Madness. Anybody been watching March Madness? Of course you have. When we let go of the restraints that we put, the restraints that you put, let go of those things, God, your medicine, your spirit, that's all I'm worried about. So for the next... Does that say 46 minutes or or 26 minutes? It's 26 minutes. For the next 26 minutes, maybe that's just our attitude together. The family of God, brothers and sisters in Christ, that we just kind of let all these things that are distractions or, or like a knife in the side, or maybe you got a knife in the back this week from somebody. Maybe somebody said just really set you off that you can bring all those things to the throne, bring all those things to the cross and lay them before God and say, all right, God, here I am. So Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14 is our text. We're going to read through 21. I pray you follow along on the screen or you look at your own text. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14. For this reason... I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of His glory, He may grant you to be strengthened with power through His Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now, To him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, we need your work. We need your word. We need the move of your spirit. And as our text says, we simply humble ourselves before you tonight that we be strengthened, that we be changed, that you bring focus where it's needed, that you do your work in each of our lives. That means so many different things, and we don't have to worry about all that. We just simply bring ourselves before you. And, and as humbly as we know how, we present ourselves to say, we, the body of Christ, need you. We need your power. We need your presence. We need your truth. We need your salvation. And so God, is, as walls are broken down and hearts are laid bare, I pray this time be something that, that we leave this place remembering 2023 and this time that we were before you and, and, and this month or the, maybe just this place in our walk that 
we were drawn to you and we responded to you with a yes. We responded to you with a yes, God, please work. It's in your holy name that we pray and trust. And it's in your name that we will always call on. Amen. So Ephesians chapter 3 verse 14 has been over and over um, that I continue to hear people say, my favorite text of all Scripture. Well, that got my attention. My favorite prayer of all Scripture. I, I could spend uh, you know, 12 weeks teaching through this prayer, Paul's prayer for, for the church. I, I could spend weeks here. And that got my attention. I I did not, when I read through this, I I have to be honest, I didn't have that response. But it was my own fault. It wasn't the Scripture's fault, was it? It wasn't God's fault that I I completely missed it. It was my own. Uh, My heart uh, shrouded up, my my mind completely on something else. And I read through it, and I was like, oh, that's nice. I moved on. Wait a second. (laughs) And then somehow in my walk, God brings back these Scriptures that I did desperately need and says would you wake up would you open your eyes would you open your ears most importantly would you just lay yourself before me and listen to what is being read listen to what is being said and then maybe dig a little deeper anybody ever encouraged you to dig deeper of course and if someone hasn't let this be the opportunity Take what you have been given and, and the gift of God that has been displayed and, and the Word and the believers around you and where you're at, maybe, maybe this is a good wake-up call. None of us have arrived and where you're at, God's not done with you. He, he hasn't given up on you. He's not done with you. But He needs you to dive in with Him. He needs you to present yourself to Him with no strings attached. Just to say, God, here I am. Now you do your work. And as you so move, and as you show me through the Scriptures, and as you call me unto yourself, I will respond with yes. Yes, God. What else do we need to present? How else do we need to present ourselves before the throne other than that? Do we need to figure things out and and then give God good ideas? But how quick are we throughout the week to present ourselves in that way? God, here's my idea and God, here's what you're going to do. God, here's, here's what you don't know. You've never said that? Never, never thought that? Yeah, you have. I have too. God, here's, here's, what, here's what needs to happen for this situation to get right. So Paul says, For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every, every family in heaven and on earth is named. That, that name of Christ, that brother and sister in Christ, the, the reason we say, Let's work together. The reason we say let's worship together, the reason in Brian's absence that he has somebody from town here to to fellowship with you and and to to break bread with you is because we're brothers and sisters in Christ and and we live close enough that I didn't have to travel four days to get here. I just drive about 15 minutes from the house that we strive together. I've seen some of you in town. You remembered my name. I thought that was pretty cool from the last time we were together. Right? It's hard to remember people's names. You remember my name. Most importantly, though, there was this common ground between us. That we love and worship God Almighty. Isn't that enough? And, and Paul says here, these walls have been broken down. Jew and Gentile, and, and who has access to the throne, and, and who doesn't, and who's going to tell you what to do, and who's able to preach, and who's able to teach. No. Every family in heaven on earth is named under the same name. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the same name. That's why we strive together. That's why we work together. But I don't want to miss this in 14 before we move on. Paul says, I bow before the Father. For this reason, 
going back to previous statements, like chapter 2, verse 12, remembering that you were at one time separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers to the covenants of the promise. See, if you had all been strangers to the covenant of the promise, like we read, like you had no access to salvation, you had no access to the scriptures, and, and you just happened to walk in here tonight, and I announced to you that the sin and the struggle and the, the God that you're, you full well know of, yet you had no access to, as of tonight, you have access to salvation, you have access to the King of all kings, to your Creator, your Savior, you have access to talk to Him, to walk with Him, to receive from Him His salvation, His goodness. You have flags. I assure you, the place would erupt like it was March Madness and someone just you know, hit a layup to win the game. We would go crazy. We've gotten a little bit numb. I, we don't need to sound. We could, sound team, we could sound a buzzer real quick, right? We could do a 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 sound a buzzer. We could just all go nuts. That's not what we're talking about, is it? But that spring welling up within us, oh, I'm serious about that. God saying and doing things that are absolutely unexplainable in your life because that's what he does, that is what I'm talking about. You being able to, to open your mouth and that spring that's welling up within, within you to open your mouth and these things of God come out instead of things of sinfulness, that, that is what I'm talking about. And when you're opening your mouth through the week and it's, it sounds like death, it feels like death, and to the person that you're opening your mouth to, on the receiving end, it is death. You are neglecting to bow yourself before the Father. So we bow our hearts. We bend our knees. So there's this, this all-consuming, when we read, I bow my knees before the Father, it's all of us. It's our heart, our mind, our soul, our spirit, everything about us. But there, we can't skip the physical. I could have a... A big fat camo, that's my favorite color. I could have a camo recliner up here. You guys have seen them, right? You can order camo recliners. Maybe one day I'll, I'll grab one. I don't have one right now. But I could have my, my favorite color recliner up here. I could be lean back. You know how you can hit those clicks in a recliner? Click, 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 click. And it holds for you at the, like the depth of the recliner. And you think you're going back. Feet all the way up. At the end of a long, I could do that up here, right? I mean, salvation should still be salvation, Scripture should still be Scripture. Wouldn't it seem a little off? It sure would. The body of Christ, throughout all history, has experienced posture of the body in relation to worship of God. And as we have hit this era of church history, the people of God are forgetting what it means to bow before our Savior. To come before the throne of God with ourselves presented fully to Him. Surrendered to Him. It's humble on our knees that we find this rightness with God. Righteousness given to us because of our faith. Because of our faith in our Savior. Credited to us. Abraham's faith credited to him, God credited him righteousness, right place with God. So we get to this place in history where righteousness is so given to us through the scriptures. We, we, we hear and we see and we go, man, that's awesome, but it's not for us. Man, that's great, but yeah, that stuff's long gone. God don't understand what we're dealing with here. It's the furthest from the truth, so the, the call, the prick of my heart and my mind, and, and the call to us as brothers and sisters of Christ, that we find ourselves bowed before the Father, humbly before Him, presenting ourselves to God to say, God, here I am, and I am yours. Here I am, and I am yours. You know, as I think about that, I'm reminded of going to, to a basketball game or a football game. Anybody ever play some basketball? No. Bad illustration. Anybody ever play some football? 
soccer. Great. I didn't understand soccer until I met some guys that could play really good. Wow. Well, anyway, I know you've played some baseball, basketball, soccer, football, something. Hockey? Hockey. There we go. I'm, I'm too far in the north. Hockey. My point is, as you go to the game, what do you got to do with your brain? Oh, yeah. You got to get your mind right. And I was a point guard, and uh, obviously was a point guard. Thank you. Thank you for uh, noticing. Anyway, on the way to the game, I would get my mind right. And if my mind was right, I could see things as they happened, right? I could even, as, as I got older, I couldn't at first. But as I got older, um, I could see, I, I could say, we need to change this play. Or this defense isn't working. Or, or we would talk back and forth. You could, with your mind right, you could be in the right place at the right time before every. And, and when, I, when I say about getting your mind right, I would actually work plays through my head, right? On the way to the game, I'm going, you know, in Oklahoma, as, as a lot of you move from the south, we would drive sometimes two, two and a half, three hours on a, a, of a bus ride. And, uh, and you're working plays through your mind, and you're, you're thinking about what you're going to do. And, 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 you know, you had that move, right? Some of you played and had a move that you would work on. Even in hockey, you had a move. And, and one of those in basketball is like a jab step. And, and, man, I knew that if a guy come up close to me, I was going to fake and go and, and pass and set it, working all that through my mind. Why did I do that? It was worth it to me. It, it was worth my time. It was worth my attention. And I knew that the outcome was going to be good. I, I seen the difference in my mind where if my mind was right, controlled the whole deal. When you get your mind right, and you get focused on the Scriptures, you get all caught up in what God's doing. And it's not just a game, and it's not just a social event that you come to, and, and it's not just something because you want something. Or When you get all caught up in the fact that God wants to use you to bring glory unto Himself and to advance His kingdom well beyond you, like you do and say things in the here and now to where God's kingdom advances well beyond your years, and you get your mind right and set on that, and, and we, we bow our knees before Him, His glory, His glory working in us, the whole thing's going to get set right. The church as a whole. So we, we go from this side, mind right, humble before God. Mind right, humble before God, mind right, humble before God. Each one going to each home. And then we take each section and we go this home, this home, this home, that home, this one and this one and this one. As we all go to our separate homes, you get your mind right, you get your posture right, and tonight in all your own ways, humble before God, and the next day and the next day and the next day, you know what happens? We start to look different. We start to talk different. We start to act different. We become changed people because of God. We become molded, shaped, changed people. That's when you open your mouth and things start to sound godly. That's not, not perfected, changed. Right people, right place with God. So we bow our knees before the Father from whom heaven... Every family in heaven and on earth is named that according to the riches of His glory, He may grant to you, grant you to be strengthened with power through His Spirit in your inner being, that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend. Kind of need that, don't we? In that place, as we've kind of laid this picture out, we're in a place where we we being rooted and grounded in, in love may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge to be filled with all the fullness of God. So for this reason going back to verse 12 strangers, the commonwealth of Israel strangers to the covenants of promise having no hope without God in the world but now 
in Christ, we're in verse, chapter 2, verse 13, but now in Christ, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of cross, for he, for the, by the blood of Christ, for he himself is our peace, who has made us both one and has been broken down the flesh, the dividing wall of hostility removed. Verse 18, for through him we have access in one spirit to the Father, that we're no longer strangers and aliens, but are fellow citizens with the saints, members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure being joined together grows into a holy temple of the Lord, and him you also being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit, the work of God. We get to this Verse 14, and that's what Paul's saying. It's for this reason that I bow my knees before the Father and understand that there's no hope for you outside of Christ. No hope for you in, in your, your inner being. No hope for you in your person. No hope for you in your life outside of His glory granting you to be strengthened. God, what do, where do I need to be? I want to see you. Your glory strengthens me. I don't have the words to say. I, I don't have the ability. But as I set my hope on you, as I set my eyes and my mind and my heart on you, grant this strengthening to me. It is with power through His Spirit in the very inner being. So what are you skipping? If you neglect this bowing our knees before the Father, what are you skipping out on? You're skipping out on the glory of God. What are you missing if, if you continue in your prideful way? The walls that have been built up, the rooms that you have created that you swear you'll never open that door. What are you missing? You're missing the glory of God in your life that's going to strengthen you with all power. We don't comprehend it, do we? I, I'm going to leave this tucked away, and here's what I heard about that that changed my life. Great author. Great title of a book, How to Ruin Your Life by 30. Isn't that such a great title? If you were 29, it would catch your attention. And you could remove the number. The illustration that was given was a trap set that would spring one day that Satan's okay with waiting. The trap that has been set is sin. But it looks different in all of our lives. Something was said to you. Something was done to you. So you said something. You did something. All... We could list a million reasons on this wall, and we would all probably grab in on some of them. Something has been done or said where you've locked away, and you refuse to let God have it. So it's a trap. Because it's going to spring, it's going to let loose, and you're going to see ruin come to your marriage. You're going to see ruin come to your life. The death that you now feel and are experiencing is going to come to the very forefront and present itself in so many ways. And as I read that, I thought, oh my goodness, it's me. How did I miss it? Isn't that the truth in us? It's... Isn't that the truth of the Scripture, that it requires us? But what I'm saying is, it's so real that we are, with our disconnect of, no, this is life, and those spiritual things, that's just, that's just something that we do. But that's the furthest from the truth. The spiritual things, the things of God, this freedom that we see and hear about is... It's for each of us in our walk. So let me speed it up a little bit. Our three hours has ran out really, really quick. <clears throat> so God, what do I do? You're going to open your mouth. And you're going to let me hear about it. 
God, you already know about it. I want to hear your heart, though. That was my prayer. God, what do I do? Let me hear about it. You let God hear your, your heart? Do you let God hear your prayers, your cry, your, your, your victories, your, your heartbreaks, your brokenness? I'm talking about from, from birth till now. All of it. You let God hear that? Or do you have those compartments, those rooms that are locked away deep inside that you swear you will never bring before God or anybody? You've said that or prayed that. Can we give this wake-up warning with the Scriptures that if, if you neglect God's Word and His way for you, that, that death, the continual death that you're experiencing because of the sinfulness and something that was said or done is going to continue and bring you to the place of death? That there's no other way except the throne of God by which life comes into your bones and into your life and into your family? There's no other way to, to be able to honestly stand before God and say, thank you God for the, the blood of Christ. It, it's covered me and, and it's, it's all of me. And all of these things or this thing that I was holding on to, God, I need healing in the here and now. You know, God saved us eternity in Christ for salvation. He's, he's, he brought all that to start now. Did you, did you know that? To start now. So what is it that you're holding on to? When we read verse 20, Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think, what do you need to bring to the throne? I remember driving one day going, God, how long must I wait? And you know what the response was, right? Been waiting on you, Tracy. That's, that's what I've been waiting on. I've been waiting for you to, all the cares or all the tries or all the ways that you were going to overcome. Bear with me, right? All the ways that I was going to make things different or right or better. Or I wouldn't go to this sin, or I wouldn't go to that, or I wouldn't do this, and I would just, I, I, I would fix those things. To change my whole being attitude, to get my mind right and say, God, how long must I wait on you? I need you to do it. I need your right, right place with you. I need your healing. Your way is the only way, and I can't figure out a way. <laughs> and the response was, I've been waiting on you, buddy. Let's go. I've been waiting on you. Now, you're going to see my goodness. You're going to feel and know my goodness and my healing. So back to that book, How to Run Your Life by 30. So I, I, I pull into the house one night, and all the kids were asleep in the van. Miracle among itself. You with me? Every child, every child snoozing. I've been praying for a time that my sister in Christ, who God gave me, is also my wife, and so this is a great opportunity for us to pray together, right? And a brother or sister in Christ in your life may not be your husband or wife, but, but a brother or sister in Christ needs to hear what God's doing in your life, and then you guys pray together and watch the miracles of God flood from the throne. Are you with me? Because God set us free for this public walk, and God set us free as brothers and sisters to, to really share and grab onto. It's just these prayers of brothers and sisters that we see this freedom and healing and, and right things in God happen in the here and now. And so the kids are asleep, and I turn the van off, and I said the dreaded, most dreaded thing you could ever say to your husband or wife. Hey, can we talk for a second? And she goes, <gasps> Uh-huh, <laughs> you know. And I'm not making light of the situation. I'm just saying truthfully, she said yes. And the worst thing you can ever do when you're talking to somebody like that is then pause. But we all do it. Long pause. I said, here's what God showed me. Here's what God put in front of me that I myself didn't even realize was so broken. But praise God that he showed me. Because it was a trap. 
it was going to bring ruin. My family wouldn't be here. My family wouldn't be a family. But the realness of God through posture of heart and mind, the mind right, the posture of the body, the, these prayers that I didn't even know I was praying, just of Scripture. The work of God descends upon the details of our, our life. The work of God, the power of God, the salvation of God descends into your very being. Those are the, the when we read about these spiritual gifts of God, and we read through chapter 2 that we're no longer strangers and aliens to hope of God in our life, no longer dead in trespasses of sin and what, what we once walked, yet we now present ourselves, we now bow our knees before the Father. The most freeing thing I've ever done in my life is is share God's work and those, those core details of, of my life that God exposed and showed me this, this thing. And as God showed me, the most freeing thing ever did was then share with a sister in Christ, my wife. Praying together through these things, walking together through these things. What is it again that in your mind and your heart that God can't do. Pray that. God, I don't get it. I don't understand it. I don't see a way to healing. I don't see a way for this to be right. I, I don't see a way for healing to happen now. I, I just don't get it. But I do trust you. I trust your word, I trust you and your salvation, and and I rest in that. So God, would you show me this pathway? And ultimately, the Spirit of God speaking to your heart and mind in the truth of the Scriptures that you must put your trust in Him and Him alone, there's some of you here tonight that that that's a reality. Your living death, apart from salvation in Christ, no relationship with the Savior, your Creator, no, no ability to partake in any of what we're talking about. You leave this place and God's going, you need me. You need my salvation. It's true. It's your sin and you know it. And you're responding to God with, forget it. Now I'm going to continue in my way. Could I encourage you real quick? We're all going to die. Right? Apart from Jesus coming back in your lifetime, we're all going to take our last breath. When's yours? Would you tell me? Someone want to tell me when your last breath is? Uh, no? No one wants to tell me when their last breath is? Okay. You want to know why no one's going to tell me? Because you don't know. I mean, I'm just overstating the obvious here. So why are you acting like you do? I won't be the first person to to preach or teach and you guys be mad at. Right? Because the the truth is hard. It's hard sometimes. We got process to it. But what I'm asking you is do you think you have forever? The, the, The call from Scripture is immediate. That you not harden your heart before Him, that you not continue to build walls in front of Christ, in in front of the truth of the word, but that you respond, yes, God. All Scripture, 2 Timothy 3, 16, all Scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. What is it that God cannot bring you to, bring you through, and then Him be glorified in all of it? What is it? And I think we agree tonight that He is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think according to the power at work within us it's for His glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. We could just end it right there, right? And some of you are wishing that I would. And I'm with you. We, we could have dismissed after the children's song earlier, I assure you. We, we could have prayed and dismissed, had coffee, went home, and it been good in the Lord. I'm thankful 
that you guys, as a body, are faithful to be here and worship together. As you continue in this, you get to see God's goodness. As you set aside your preference, as you set aside your stubbornness, you get to see God's goodness. If there's any encouragement from the Word, it's that we submit ourselves to Him. If there's any encouragement from us being together tonight, it's that we continue to strive together. God's church is going to be victorious. Amen? Hang on a second. God's church is going to be victorious, right? All right. That eight minutes has really got us messed up, y'all. So as we come to a close, the future that God has for us is good. The future that God has for us in Him, let me say it. Let me say it this way. It's all right, y'all. It's, it's all consuming good. I'll never forget a slow motion play as we talked about our mind being right. My mind was right. And my post cut off the baseline. Seconds are running out. It's 96 95. We're 95. The other team's 96. And I fake a jump shot. And I should have slung a bounce pass. And I faked my jump shot, and instead of slinging a bounce pass, I tried to dump it. Not shoot it, just dump it to him, right? 6-5 came out from under the goal, which left my big guy going to win the game wide open. It was slow motion. And I dumped past it, and 6-5 knocked it away. Why am I sharing that story right now? Because one, God brought it to my mind to share with you earlier. Two, as an 18-year-old, what did that feel like? Let me just back up. For any age, <laughs> in that moment, what did that feel like? Utter defeat and failure. Thank you, brother. Utter defeat and failure. That's just a game. Whew, you guys, if I pull into the driveway that night and the Spirit of God that so clearly told me, here's what I showed you, here's what you asked for, I have given to you, I have exposed to you what you needed to know about yourself. Now share it with your sister in Christ. Glorify me with your whole self. Everything, all details about you, just glorify me with it. If I skip that, I'm telling you, our family would not be a family. That's realness in the here and now. That's life now because guess what? The eighth one's coming in July. Boy or girl, we're going to praise God for it. And she loves me more now than she ever could have before. And I, in turn, as years have grown, love her more than I ever could because of the work of God in those details. Foundational, uh, wherever it is locked away in you, whatever you want to call it. When God's Spirit so shows you what it is that you're to do and you acknowledge life is sure to happen. Freedom is sure to happen. And... Uh, my urgency is that you don't have forever. We already worked through that. My urgency from the gospel is I want for you freedom and life in Christ. The realness of raising your children. The realness of relationships in your life. The realness of where you go to work and what you struggle. The realness of Satan in these things. The realness of what you're battling. God sets us free. And I want you to hear that from the Scriptures. I want you to hear that from testimony, and I want you guys to share that together. And, and maybe most importantly, the family that God established, I want us to be victorious within the family. I want us to be victorious with our children and the church. You want to see the church get right and set ablaze? Let the family get right within the church. Let the Word of God be the focus of the home. 
what comes out of our mouth glorify God and whoever's in the home here and see it and whoever's connected to that home here and see it and you're going to see some things that we never dreamed possible in our lifetime. We never dreamed possible in our town. Won't happen here. Not going to happen in my marriage. Not going to happen in this town. Not. What are we saying? We're telling God everything He can't do. What if we just start absorbing everything that God can do and the truth of His Word? Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxiety. See if there's any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. This is Psalm 139, 23. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me. Know my anxieties, my, my shortcomings, my failures, my, my, my weekly. S- see if there's any wicked way in me and lead me, lead me in the way everlasting. Who's leading your way? Who's leading your week? Who's leading your next word? Let's pray together. Heads bowed and eyes closed. I'm going to read another verse. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that He may exalt you, casting all your anxiety on Him because He cares for you. And before I pray, maybe we just take a time, a few minutes, for you to respond No other time in your week like this. No phone to respond to, no game to watch, nothing. Just you and God. And because of these things, and as Paul said, for this reason, God, we now bow before you. Not just to pray for the meal but to lay ourselves bare before Him. Thank you, God, for your word. Thank you, God, for your spirit speaking so clearly to my heart and mind. Thank you, God, for your love poured out on us. The the overwhelming, all-consuming truth and, and feeling of peace that we have that passes all understanding. God, we give you praise. Our our hearts and minds because of your scripture and because of your spirit are truly set into a place of hope. And so God, we give you all glory. We respond with praise in the best way that we know how. So teach us. Show us. Reveal to us. We will be faithful. I will be faithful my home, so far as it depends upon me and my family, will respond with praise to you. God, keep us. God, strengthen us. A lot of discouragement arises. A lot of anxiety arises. A lot of brokenness arises. But In your salvation, you have promised to bring a spring of life that wells up within us, overcoming all these things, overcoming all death and sin. Thank you, God. We give you all praise. In your name we pray. Amen. We're going to have a song to close. Is this true? So as... Our talented ones come and, and prepare their instruments. I'll give you a couple things to hold on to. I don't remember the first person to, to ever uh, bring this to my attention, but, but once it was brought to my attention, 
it become a staple verse in my life. It's Isaiah 40, 30, and 31. That even youth grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall, but those who trust in the Lord will renew their strength. They'll soar on wings like eagles. They'll run and not grow weary. They'll walk and not faint. What is that saying? Well, 800 years before Christ was born, that was written. 800 years before Christ was born, that was written. Foretelling. Foretelling of what God's people would walk like and live like. As we trust in the Lord, we soar on wigs like eagles. We can agree that we know what eagles look like around here, right? <laughs> soar on wings like eagles. And then the other verse I want to leave you with is Romans 10, 9 and 10. Confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, and you will be saved. Remember the mind, the bowing before God? Now bring these things, salvation, unto life, into my life. We got a week that we need to soar through, and it's in God's power that we're going to do it. So, you guys stand, and as we sing, let your response to God be an ultimate yes, God.